I have one of my favorite people. Mary, thank you for being with us. How about introduce yourself? Probably most people don't even know the, the minister of the church. But let's find <laughs> out about her, okay, please? Well, thank you so much for having me, thank Fred. You. I'm really excited about this chance for Chris and I to talk about some of the things that are going on at St. Paul's Church right here in Centerville. I'm the Reverend Mary Friel. I'm the rector. Um, we are a very old congregation established in 1692. Our current church was built around 1834. It's right in the middle of town. And Mary, let me make sure I get this straight. This Sunday, okay, at the Canard, right across from the Canard building, what I call the Canard, and by the way, I started teaching there about 40 years ago. That's my first teaching assignment. We'll have a special event. Uh, Chris is going to be talking about the Calvary and tied in with Queen Anne's County, right? Right, that's at 4 o'clock. At 4 o'clock. Now on the 13th, when and where would that event be? That's a, that's a service, 10 o'clock, Holy Communion service. service, and okay. everyone is invited. Okay. And the sermon will be about St. Paul's and our role in, in slavery. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, what are your requirements for service? We have masks? Yes, we have masks okay. for, and for the service. Okay, all safety precautions are yes. being taken place. Yes. Okay, so that's two events. And what then three? the yeah. third event is Sunday, February 27th at 4. We have a concert. Oh, totally. Thomas Beard, who's quite a well-known baritone, okay. um, he will be giving a performance of highlights of Porgy and Bess. Oh, terrific. And we'll bring um, some of his friends also to sing. And the program also includes a lot of context and explanation of many of the of the arias. So, oh, that, and that is free and open to the public as well. There was an article about all of the Black History Month events in the the newspaper. So, so. If, you, if we've missed something from this program, get the local paper yes. and it'll list everything. Or they can call the church. They can call the church or just look at the church website or look at our Facebook page and um, everything is there. We have been, since 2018, the Episcopal Church has been tasked with looking at our roots and our comp, comp, complicity with slavery. Okay. We have a program called uh, Sacred Ground, which was a film program looking at slavery, looking at racism, and we've all been asked to look at in a local context. And I've been very blessed to have Chris Pupke, who's a parishioner and who is a local historian, and I think it's time for him to... Do me a favor, introduce Chris. Uh, so, uh, Chris okay. Pupke, um, he, he, we just can't say enough about his scholarship and all he's done in teaching us at St. Paul's about our past. Well, good. Chris, that's a very important. We were talking before we went on. So important. We, ta we were talking about that. I went on the Harriet Tubman uh, walk New Year's Eve. Here I am, less than a half an hour away to one of the most historic things that have taken place to the, all of America, obviously to the African-American community, and that is considered sacred land. I knew nothing yes. about it for 45 years. So Chris, go ahead, take the ball and run, okay? Well, I'll start with uh, the uh, session that we'll have uh, this Sunday, okay. February 6th, over right. at the Canard uh, African American Cultural Heritage right. Center. And I remind everybody, right across Canard from the Canard High High building. Right. It's right, right next door to yes. Canard yeah. Elementary School. It's the old uh, African American high school and school uh, here in Centerville. Uh, at 4 o'clock, Sunday the 6th. And I'll talk about the United States Colored Troops. Oh, wow. Uh, the United States Colored Troops are the free and enslaved African Americans that uh, left Queen Anne's County uh, in 1863. And these are people from Queen Anne's County? Queen Anne's County uh, that left the county and joined the Union Army during the Civil War and helped fight to preserve the Union to end slavery. Uh, and some of their stories are quite remarkable. Were they all historic. volunteers, Chris, or were they kind of conscripted? How did uh, that they work? They were volunteers. All volunteers. Uh, they were volunteers. Uh, I have been able to document uh, over 430 of these people. Just from Queen County, Anne's County? Queen Anne's County. 430? 430. 430 um, and they were recruited. Uh, uh, actually, a Union general from the state of Alabama, really? who was an abolitionist, came up and said, we need uh, some of these men to fight for the uh, And went the around Union Queen side. Anne's County recruiting. And there was a very dramatic moment in September of 1863 down at the wharf in Queenstown when hundreds of these African Americans left Queen Anne's County uh, to sign up and enroll and enlist in the Union Army. Are you kidding me? Right here in Queen Anne's? Right Ash? here in Queenstown. Queenstown. Yeah, at the old uh, steam, steamboat really? landing. And yeah. nobody knows this. It's not well known. No. It is very well documented, which is very fortunate for those of us who want to learn more about it. 
there is a lot of information available. Hopefully you're writing a book on all this. Uh, well, right now I'm oh. gathering the information. Good. I was getting close. I, was, I thought Good. I was getting close to okay. being done with the uh, research part of it. But then I found out a whole another tranche of information that I had to go through. That's an amazing number. What was the population of Queen Anne's County at that It was time? about 16,000 in 1860. Okay. Of that 16,000, about 7,500 uh, 7, were African Americans. And 400 of them joined. And about 4,000 were uh, enslaved. And there was a po free African American population of about 3,500. In, in Queen county, Anne's County. In Queen Anne's County at you the can. start of the Civil War. And you have, if you come across individual names, obviously you have, I guess. I mean, if you. 430, some of them at this point, individual names. Uh, many of their descendants remain here in the yeah, county. And they still have descendants to this day. We were excited to find out that one of the veterans was actually the sexton of St. Paul's Church. You're kidding me. Your yes, church? Chris can talk a little mm -hmm. bit about James mm -hmm. Taylor. Okay, do you ha yeah, what, if you have a minute, talk okay. about an individual or two, whatever you're comfortable with. Well, let me start with how yeah. I got involved with this. Okay. Uh, about six years ago, Mary Margaret Goodwin, the mm -hmm. county historian, yes. asked me to do a presentation at the historic summit, the Queen Anne's County History Summit. Um, and I thought long and hard trying to figure out what I would do. She didn't have a topic for me. She said, just go, go do something. something. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out what I had. And I looked through the history that I've done with St. Paul's, the, the family history that I've done uh, on my mother's side of the family from Queen Anne's County, uh, and some of the interests that I have in the Civil War in general. And I realized that there's a very good, interesting story to be told oh, yes. with the United States Colored Troops. Four, I'm still sitting here, the number 450 running around my head here. That's amazing. It's a great number. Yes, it is. Um, among those uh, was a gentleman by the name of James Taylor. Uh, oh. Anybody who was at that summit in 20, I think it was 2016, might remember Mary Margaret had some of his descendants Pop Taylor, around. who we have the memorial Pop garden Taylor. for down at the bottom, yep. of the, bottom of the hill. He's there. a descendant, yeah. Pop Taylor was. Yes, sir. Are you kidding me? Um, he was an amazing man himself, by the way. Quite an educator. Another show, yeah. another show. Right, right. He could do, we oh, could do a show amazing. on him. Amazing, okay. um, And she got the, uh, the uh, county commissioners to sign a big uh, thing. Proclamation Proclamation, that's yes. a better word. Got the county commissioners to sign a proclamation in his honor. Oh, wow. But James Taylor was born enslaved around Centerville <clears throat> uh, to a, uh, a member of the congregation at St. Paul's. In March of 1864, uh, he left in slavery and joined what would become uh, the 30, he was a member of the 39th Regiment of the United States Colored Troops, Regiment, Colored Company Troops. K. And during his time in, uh, in the Union Army, he would have likely experienced uh, the Battle of the he Crater. He was actually in battles, okay. Um, which is a, a famous uh, battle that the United States Colored Troops were in in July of 1864. Mm -hmm. And he would have been there when Joseph Johnston's army surrendered um, to uh, William Tecumseh Sherman yeah. in late April of 1865, which really marks the final end of the Civil War. We often look at Lee surrendering to Grant on Palm Sunday, early April of 1865 as the end of the war. But there was still one this army floating event. around. Yes. Uh, and he would have been there for What that. amazing, you're telling me these stories and I'm just flipping, you know, in World War I, People didn't know the history of wonderful African Americans helping in the Civil War. Remember how World War One they had many of the poor African Americans doing maintenance jobs and stuff like we don't we don't want them in our army. World War Two, you know that type of thing. And here we were in Civil War. People from Centerville, right, actively involved in supporting the Union. It's yes. pretty amazing. It's a story that needs to be told. It needs, and we need, we to, need go, to learn from our yes, past, not yes. be afraid Please of it. Please write the book, all right? I'll pay for the cover, okay? <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so after the war, Mr. Taylor came back to Centerville, okay. lived here, uh, was employed by uh, St. Paul's Church as the sexton, okay. doing a lot of the cleaning and repair work in the church. I imagine if we took him on a tour of the church today, he would know more about that building than probably than anybody any of else. us does uh, when you look at the old Do his, church. Does, does Pop Taylor's uh, relatives, have you, 
Did they know this? This story? Yes, they Mary Margaret okay. brought a number of them in to okay. that history summit. We have to hook you, Mary. We have to hook you. I'm sure you've already done it. The Methodist Church on the bottom of the hill. Yes. Right. I, I hope Chris gets to speak there if he well, hasn't already. Let me tie into that okay. because I believe Mr. Taylor's family helped found it, that church oh, wow. Wow. Uh, in the 1870s. A Phil okay. Taylor, uh, who was also James Taylor's father, uh, gave the land that that oh, church okay. was built on. We've got to get in touch with you. Do you know Walter and Willie Pauls? Uh, they were educators in this county for 30 or 40 years, very active in the Methodist Church. And, and you haven't spoken yet to that church? Oh, we'll... No. We've we'll, invited them to come to the okay. presentation. We'll talk afterwards. Yeah. We'll, you need to be there. This mm -hmm. is a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. I still get, Bob Taylor was alive when I moved yeah, here 40 years yeah. ago, and he owned half of Centerville, I think, at that point. I'm sorry, keep going. Please. James Taylor's granddaughter, Marcella, was uh, a very dear friend of the family. Okay. My family. All right. She was like a third grandmother to me. Mm -hmm. So these people are here. Their descendants are here. Is they walk any, these streets. Chris, let me ask you, is there any monument or any recognition for the 450, I'm assuming all men, who volunteered to go? Is there any type of monument or anything in this county? Not in Queen Anne's County, and that's one of the things, if you needs come to be done. It needs to be done. To the talk, yeah. that's what I, where I end my slides, is we need to recognize these people. If I live in Queenstown. They've got a monument yeah. in Chestertown for the okay. folks that uh, served from Kent County. Sure. Uh, they've got a historic site down in, um, just outside of Easton, uh, Unionville. Okay. Uh, where they've got uh, USCT from there, United States Colored Troops. From there. You've already sold out this lecture. And it sounds so good. I'll buy them all the tickets, okay? We need to document these people and we need oh, okay. to. Uh, it's a honor great and story that nobody story. knows. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, that's, that's, and I'm going to keep doing this and I apologize. Remind us again this coming Sunday. Right, we're, Sunday, we're filming February on the 6th. February 6th, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Mass probably recommended, okay? And this will be on this amazing story. Uh, how many individuals do we talk about on, on Sunday? I mean, do you do, is that, how does um, the lecture go? I'm trying to think. I give the background okay. uh, of what was going on in the county. Uh, I'm able to refer to a slave narrative okay. from someone who was enslaved out on Corsica Neck. Uh, right uh, out here in Corsica Right Neck. out here. Um, so in terms of the actual USCT, I probably talk about four or five of them. Oh, that'd be great. Um, I mean. Look, at it, if, folks, if you have nothing for Sunday, it's going to be cold, it's going to be chilly, no snow, roads are going to be clear, yeah. plenty of parking. Get over to the, right across from the Canard building. This center, I think, I, I think I'm free if my grandkids will let me skip an indoor soccer game. I'll be there. You already sold one ticket. I know you're not selling tickets. Why don't we do this? Because keep moving on. Because what we'll do, that's not steal from your lecture on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be Sunday. We're going to hear about 450 brave Americans, right? who helped in our efforts to you know, unite the country. Now, what's happening on the 13th? That's the following Sunday. Right? Yes, that's, that's at 10 o'clock. There's our regular 10 o'clock church service, but our sermon is special. Chris will be talking about former parishioners and their role in slavery. Okay, and the idea. memorials in our church, our stained glass window, oh, wow. things that were given. Um, and the talk is going to be about St. Paul's connection with slavery. Can you give us a little sneak preview with that, uh, for the lecture? The one that I'll, I'll talk about, I'll start right at the pulpit. Okay. And the Reverend E.J. Stearns during the Civil War was a Southern sympathizer, a virulent racist. He, uh, the Bishop of Maryland, which was the bishop for St. Paul's at that time of the entire Eastern Shore, uh, was a Union sympathizer, and he sent out an edict saying, thou shalt pray uh, a prayer of thanksgiving for these recent Union victories. Reverend Stern said, we ain't doing that here in St. Paul's. <laughs> and that was always, you know, growing up, that was always told with kind of a wink and a nod. Oh, I know. Da -da -da. Well, Maryland um, was in turmoil over this whole issue, was it not? It was Saint very Paul's, much. St. Paul's was. Yes. If you come out Sunday, February 13th, 10 a.m. at St. Paul's, I'll talk about a house divided, talking about our house of worship in the congregation. What During actually the, the turmoil within the church was itself. split. Yeah. Was the Episcopal Church at that time, did it take a stand on slavery, Mary, or where were you? Individual parishes, individual dioceses do. To our disgrace, we are the one major denomination that did not split. Okay. With the Confederate States left, and when they came back after the war, it was as if it had never happened. Really? The Baptist Church split. 
the, the Presbyterian Church split. There were, you know, pro-Southern and pro-Northern divisions, but the Episcopal Church never did. I think that's why we're trying so hard now to make reparations and to own up to our past. You know, Mary, and it's so important in this day and time in America where a lot of people, and they're entitled to their opinion, we're trying to erase parts of history. Right. Whether in this particular issue, I mean, I'm embarrassed. I've lived here 45 years, and the Harriet Tubman Trail is half an hour away, 450, and you can get 450 people from Queen Anne's County to do anything, it's a miracle, right? But to get involved in a war and go away and the turmoil in your church, uh, that will be interesting, okay? Well, we, we believe it's important to learn from our past. Sure. Because the history of slavery also was part of our history of Jim Crow and Reconstruction, yes. Yes. and I think still has ramifications for life in Queen Anne's County today. Yes, it does. So we believe that it's important to look at our past and those people that we held up as models or heroes, and they or are at least heroes. clergy and leaders, and just to get at the truth of what really happened. Mary, an eye-opening thing for me, I'm an old man now, and I told you this in the, in the Harriet Tubman Trail, they walked barefoot through swamps, through cut cornfields. Those stalks are like punji sticks. I was in, I mean, these are sharp things. Through marshes, through unbelievable weather. And what type of bravery does that take? Braver than anything I've ever done or ever considering doing. And what you're talking, to get on a ship and go to war. And they're leaving family members behind. Oh, you don't know if you're ever coming back. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what you're going to what you're gonna be given to fight with, that type of stuff. And they're amazing stories, and none of us know anything. Well, good. I'll be there Sunday. I might not make your sermon, or Father Clem will get mad at me. Now, what happens <laughs> the third event? Now, the music thing, Chris, are you, who's in? Who's that, in that is a concert. Okay. That's at four o'clock. So Chris won't be speaking at that. Will you be I singing, don't, Chris? I don't think so. Okay. We're singing, no. You we don't have, want to hear me we sing. Have, <laughs> we have Thomas Beard, who's an African-American baritone. Okay. Um, he sang at Rosa Parks' funeral. Oh, wow. And he has put together a program with excerpts from Porgy and Bess, George Gershwin's opera, and written commentary and context. So everyone is invited to to that. That's okay. at 4 o'clock okay. on the 27th in our church. Okay, so next is on Liberty set, Street. The next three weeks, we've got entertainment on these kind of cold, right. dreary February days. And it's all, the first two in particular, what Chris is doing, we're Queen Anne's County centric, okay? Yes, we're, we're, yes, we're, we're not talking to... about what happened in New York or Massachusetts or Biloxi, Mississippi. We're talking about men and women involved in part of our country's history, your church's history, right here from Queen Anne's County. I mean, that's an amazing story that nobody knows. It needs to be better reported. Oh, it does. People it's need a... to know it. Oh, yeah. Now, man, let's do this one, let's do this one more time through. Okay. This Sunday, again. Go ahead. This Sunday, 4 o'clock at the Kennard African American no cost. Cultural... No cost. 4 o'clock. That's the talk, the lecture on the Collard Regiment and Queen Anne's County soldiers who fought. And it sounds like that's going to be a great... You know, I hope and I think Chris has some mm -hmm. slides. Um, uh, you want to share? Yeah, please. Go ahead and share. Go ahead. Right. About that he'll be I using on Sunday. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. Um, well, th th this slide shows the state uh, of race relations in the county uh, in before the Civil War. It is a, an ad from the local paper uh, for a runaway slave uh, named Greenberry Brown, Piney Neck up there at the top. All right. That's uh, Bennett Point area. Um, this is particularly poignant for me because Valentine Bryan is one of my ancestors. He's buried Again. at St. Peter's Church oh, wow. uh, in Queenstown. Um, and what is amazing, I learned in the Harry Tubman Walk, there were bounty hunters, right, and rewards. And I mean, people, some of them didn't have jobs, would just go out and hunt other human beings, hunt other human beings, which, uh, you know, it's amazing. And it? there were some who, uh, as unscrupulous as we would think that is, mm. were even more unscrupulous because they would just go in and find a free African American, just take kidnap it. them, and run them south. Well, they, well they, I was told again on that trail walk, and I'll get off of that. Is that they would they would grab people off the streets of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. yes, off the streets of Boston. Mm -hmm. I mean, to other human beings, which I find amazing. So we can see that it was a, a difficult life, to yes, say the was. least, yes, at was. that point. And when they had the opportunity to get recruited into the United States Colored Troops, the African-American community in Queen Anne's County answered that call. This is a, uh, uh, a recruitment poster calling uh, for uh, individuals to enlist in the United States Colored Troops. Come and join us brothers. 
Very yeah. good. And mm -hmm. you have to think of how stirring it would have been for folks to see African Americans in uniform, under the flag, and armed with a rifle. Which um, would shock, sent shock waves to people, right? Would have horrified uh, some of the community in Queen Anne's County and would have enthralled others. I like um, the use of the word brothers. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. And we had more than four, I've been able to document more than 430 individuals from Queen Anne's County who mm -hmm. answered that call. And Lincoln himself said, without their help, the war would not have been won. He actually talked so, about from Queen yes. the folks from Queen Anne's well, County. Well, not from Queen Anne's oh, County. Oh, in general. But in, in general. general. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And there's one of them, a fellow by the name of Robert Riley. Robert uh, Riley. He was enslaved on Bennett Point by. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name. I think it's Valentine Clement, I think. Okay. Um, but he enlisted in the 7th Regiment of the United States Colored Troops, uh, moved back here uh, after the war, uh, settled near Brownsville out on Corsica Neck, um, and he is buried right here at uh, Chesterfield well, we Cemetery. That. Is that, was he awarded a medal, do you know? Or? That is his medal from the Civil War. You can't he's, wearing he's actually awarded a medal. Um, Good and one of the things that he would have witnessed as a member of uh, the United States Colored Troops 7th Regiment was Lee's surrender to oh, he Grant actually he actually was there? at Appomattox oh, Courthouse wow. on Palm Sunday, 1860. Queen Anne's County man. Queen Anne's County. Jeez. Great. Great photograph. Good looking man. Mm -hmm. Very so, proud man. Yes, he was. And, and as he of. should have been, right? Yeah. 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 Well done. Where did you get these? Is this from? That slide is from the Maryland State Archives. Okay. All right. Very good. That's a good one. Okay, so Mary, let's go. We've got it made. You've taken care of, first of all, thank you, Episcopal Church. <laughs> thank you, St. Paul's, okay, for doing this. It is February, okay? It is Black History Month. Our schools get, get involved, and it's nice to know our church is involved. Yes. Chris, your lecture is, uh, well, your lecture coming up Sunday sounds terrific. I, I will be there, I promise Great. you, okay? Uh, like I said, I'll miss this sermon, I'll get chewed up by Father Clem, but I'm there in spirit, okay? And Mary, I, uh, the musical sounds terrific. The music will be music, wonderful. That should It'll be, be wonderful. Are you doing Old Man River, do you know? With, no, oh, it's oh, music okay. from Porgy Paul and Bess. Bess. Okay. I just think of Paul Roberson with his, oh, man. I mean, come on, that's a, a well, classic. It'd be on classics. Okay. Thomas Beard has just as wonderful a oh, voice, and we're really good. excited that he's able to sing. Now, Mary, before we leave, unless you want to add anything, Chris, okay, if people were watching this show and they said, Fred, you shot a lot of information at me, I'm really interested, Ste easiest step, can they call the, Probably Paul's? the easiest thing to do you is just, just go type in St. Paul's, Church, Centerville, Maryland, and you'll see all kinds of information about what we have planned for February. Great. It has everything done for February. It has everything Times, down there. Yes. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Okay. Chris, if someone watching the show wants to get in touch with you and say, man, that's interesting. I want to get them to come to my PTA. I want to get them to come to my church or something. Can they do that? Absolutely. Tell them how they get in touch with you. Uh, you can send me an email at chris at, uh, well, let me give you the safest seat, way, the way you can Pupke1016 at gmail.com. Can you do that one more time and spell it? Pupke1016 at gmail.com. Okay. C P U P K E. And you don't mind that if people contact you? No. Nope. In okay. fact, I have conversations regularly oh, with great. people. Do you have a Facebook site? I do not. Okay, that's okay. Website? I do not. That's okay. All right. These are all works in progress. Yeah. Okay. Now, Mary and Chris, is there anything else you want to add? Have we forgotten anything? No, we're just really excited to have the opportunity to share all of this with people in Queen Anne's County. Well, I, look, at this is a community service, okay? I don't care whether you're a church or a 7-Eleven or what you are. I mean, I've learned more in the last 25 minutes than probably the last 45 years in Queen Anne. Knew nothing, Chris, about what you'll be speaking on a Sunday. There's 400-odd men who went away, okay? That, and that's an amazing story. And we better get a monument down at that Queenstown yeah. Harbor, all right? County commissioners, are you listening, okay? All right, well, look, at, first of all, thank both of you. This is going to be terrific. All success with this program. Thumbs up for just even doing it, okay? And I hope you get a great crowd, okay? Thank, thank you. you. We'll see everybody Sunday afternoon at 4. There you go. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for your time. My time's up. And we'll see you next time. And how about next time at Kennard, right across from the Kennard Annex? Let's learn about 400 plus very brave men. Thank you.